It's a thing of beauty. A Sandvik surface mining drill operating in the field at the highest level of efficiency. It took thousands of man hours and brain power to get here. I wanted to learn more about what it takes to create each rig, so I went back to the source to get a first-hand look. It all starts here, in Alachua, Florida, where Sandvik designs and manufactures its line of rotary and down-the-hole blast hole drills. Sandvik acquired the facility in 1998, and over the years the plant has grown exponentially, becoming one of the leading manufacturers of mining equipment for the world. It houses over 28,000 square feet of office space, 156,000 square feet of manufacturing space, and an additional three acres set aside for inventory and testing. A dedicated workforce of over 220 employees operate out of this location. First stop on our tour is design and development. Their implementation of innovative new technology is driven by the customer feedback they receive. Dave Parrish has been designing these rigs for years. Yep, I'm the hydraulic specialist here at Sandvik. I work with new product development teams to come up with hydraulic circuits that, that we put on the machines and um, follow through with that all the way through production and test. We are basically creating the components, laying those out, selecting those components based on the specifications they would receive from the, uh, from the product management side. Uh, of the business and uh, it's our responsibility basically to put those parts together and make sure that they they meet those performance specifications and then follow that through with the design, build and, and testing phases to make sure that all of those requirements are met in the end. Seeing that uh, translated into uh, a physical product that we actually get to follow to the field and be a part of the, the validation of and then seeing that, that our solution, our designs working and meeting a, a customer's needs. Once the design specs are locked in, all the materials are sourced. Here's where that happens. We work directly with engineering to put the specs together so that the specifications of bill and material we're creating meets the customer's needs. And then from there, our sourcing and procurement department orders the material. Our job is to develop that initial bill of material so that the rest of the organization can utilize that information to continue the process and then we follow it through the process to make sure we can deliver to our customer on time. Part of my responsibility is to develop relationships with suppliers and negotiate pricing and contracts and we're kind of like a liaison between our buying department and our suppliers so we can support our production. Design and engineering, check. Parts and scheduling, check. Now it's time to build. Each phase of the manufacturing process is painstakingly achieved by a team of dedicated perfectionists. The rig doesn't move to the next production phase until it meets their high standards. We track our daily performance in a couple of different measures. One is our monitoring system that we have in each rig bay. This rig uh, information is going to tell you what the rig number is. We're in operation 400 what day we actually start it, when we're supposed to complete it. Uh, it tells us what our completion rate is, and then our standard versus our actual hours on where we're at now. Then the guys know right now that we need the cabin and we need the engine box. That's the next couple of items that we need on this rig to, make, to be able to make it run. If it goes as planned, we'll be able to crank this machine up on Friday and be able to drive it out. I'm building a control panel for a D50, this would be like the nerve center of the whole cab. Anybody needs to troubleshoot or check something, I want it to be right, I want it to look right and be where it would be easy to go in and work on. I'm pretty particular about the way I build them. We're currently working on a DR412. This mast is an I-series mast and we're currently I'd say roughly 30% into the build. We are building the mass subs and as they're completed, we feed them to the mass and therefore we can complete the mass 100% ready to hang on the base of the rig. Uh, start to finish on this particular mass is it's a five day build. Uh, that's two assemblers, two electricians and one welder. Well, what we're working on right now is installing the mass service deck. Um, 
once we get the mass service deck installed, we'll get everything lined up. Then we can continue on to go on with our hosing. Probably about 80 hoses just right in this area. After that, it's just, we'll get the head installed and then tighten the chains and then it's pretty much a buttoned up machine. As you can see, the build process flows seamlessly from one step to the next. And it doesn't take long to realize that Sandvik places importance on safety, quality control, and efficiency throughout the build process. Our job is to support production uh, in any way possible to make it more efficient for the production guys to build the rigs. We try to standardize how we build these rigs. When the customer ends up getting the rig, let's say that they buy three or four of them, that they all look the same, they all operate the same exact way. This board basically represents everything that my team is working on. Safety is a huge part of what we do here. We want to make sure nobody gets hurt. We want to make sure they're using the right equipment. Next up, the test pad. Danny Johnson filled us in on this critical step before the machines head out for their final destination. This is a DR412i. It's one of our latest intelligent machines. It's complete with its assembly process, and now it's out at final test for preparation for shipping and commissioning in Quebec, Canada. Out here at the final test assembly, and they run the different systems that complete the machine, the feed systems, the leveling system, the undercarriage that propel the machine, and then more importantly, the mast is, is set up and the rotation system. They align all the drill pipes and they get it ready to where it's meeting all the performance values that engineering has decided. Also housed in the plan are Sandvik's tech support teams, where I learned they create technical documentation, prepare customers for delivery of the rigs, provide training and real-time support both virtually and in the field. I got a glimpse into what happens before the rig even arrives on site. My role here at uh, Sandvik is to uh, help deploy our technology and automation products uh, to the field and then make sure that we're ready when the drill rigs are arriving at site. Whether it's giving them feedback and saying, hey, we don't think that this is adequate enough, uh, you may need to uh, add some more infrastructure and this is what the server requirements are for running our software to collect data is off of the machines. We produce all the technical documentation that will go with the rigs and everything that will back up what we build, uh, how it's operated, uh, how to work on it, how to diagnose it, etc, etc. We pretty much do custom documentation. Our documentation will be specific for each serial number, so a lot of the time it is a specific one-off document for that particular rig. The exciting part is knowing that we're, we're constantly working on a new way of doing things and that we're always the first ones to produce what we've produced. The creation of custom documentation for each rig helps our customers get up and running right away. That's matched with instructional materials designed to provide a deeper understanding of core concepts, machine operation and maintenance. This emphasis on training helps ensure customers are able to get the most out of their drill rig driving increased productivity and lower TCO. I mostly spend my time working with subject matter experts to learn about what they do, learn about the equipment that we work with, and then create um, instructional materials, predominantly e-learning based, based off that information that they give me. First class training materials are matched by their responsive technical support, keeping the rigs up and running with minimal downtime. Since we all know that the equipment is potentially going to have downtime, you want to partner with a company that can get your equipment back up and operational as soon as possible. The response time is faster. We, we can definitely be more agile with what we do. We have our remote support room and we can connect to a machine remotely um, to help with that troubleshooting. Even from a training standpoint, we can send training material if they need help with troubleshooting a circuit. Then we have our technical support technicians that they can contact directly um, to support our, our frontline users. It's pretty amazing to see how everything comes together at this facility and what goes into building these technical marvels. It's safe to say that thousands of hours and an equal amount of brain power go into the creation of each rig. So when it arrives in the field, it can provide reliable, sustainable, efficient production for years to come.